Well, here we are, Saturday, March 28th, 2020, in the brave new world of COVID-19 and real estate. I'm joined by Brad Avergon of Envision Bank. Hey, Gary. How you doing? Brad, I am, uh, I'm doing well given the circumstances. I would tell you that um, it's a challenge. We've got deals moving forward. We've got deals coming apart. We've got people slowing down. All individual good decisions. And from my perspective, we have to support our people. If we support our clients and we help them, then maybe real estate will happen when it's all said and done. But I'm not focused on you know, how, how do we list that house? I'm focused on how do we help people? How about yourself? Uh, pretty much the same, Gary. I, these are, uh, these are, 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 you know, challenging times. And I think it's more important um, to be focused on you know, the, the well-being of our clients and whatever we can do to help them. And, uh, you know, the, the real estate aside, financing aside, uh, this is where we get our, 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 our chance to Kind of take care of folks, and and this is what this is what we're good at. This is what we this is what we we strive for. So, I see, I, I used to work years ago for Fidelity Investments, and one of the roles that I had was business continuity planning. And so we tried to walk through different scenarios and how you would keep things going, kind of no matter what. That was an important part of it because the last thing Fidelity wanted was to have the stock market open and have fidelity be closed. Right. And so when something like this happens, it's like, okay, we can't do physical showings like an open house anymore uh, because it's too many people. And we'd go up above the, the limit of 10. So what do we do? Uh, we're doing virtual tours. We're doing uh, tours. We do allow people into the house, but it's the, the old adage, no glove, no love. You got to put gloves on, booties. Right. We're trying to protect the listing, the people in the listing, the buyers, and frankly, ourselves. And so it's about having workarounds and coming up with workarounds that we're finding, um, you know, it, that's, that's making the difference for folks. How about yourself? It's the same thing. You know, it's, um, uh, it's been really interesting. This, this crisis that has, you know, befallen the world has in many ways sh sh shown a couple of things. One is it's shown how fragile we are, but on the other hand, it's also shown um, our fortitude and our ability to kind of uh, be creative and, and, and think outside of the, the box, come up with solutions. Um, and I think that's, that's where we are, have been shining lately. I mean, I've been impressed with a lot of the things, obviously, that companies are doing, you know, as far as, you know, uh, not manufacturing cars and manufacturing ventilators and, come, you know, uh, manu people manufacturing, you know, masks and things like that. But on my end, um, we've seen situations where transactions that were going through where people have deposits um, in, in place and where the damage could be significantly, uh, significant uh, financially. And um, we've had to work through some challenges. A, a couple of those were, uh, you know, earlier this week, uh, I had a, I had a, uh, actually, it was last week, I'm sorry. We had a loan that uh, the attorney went to the Registry of Deeds and the Registry of Deeds was closed. Um, this is when it first came out. They immediately closed the Registry of Deeds. It may have been, wasn't last week, it may have been the week before. And uh, what ended up happening is um, through some calling and uh, to the, the Bar of Overseers and the, and, and the state and so forth and so on, they were able to get the Registry of Deeds to open electronically. So now I would say 90% of the real estate transactions that are in process can still go through. They are just recorded electronically. So we adjusted our system that way. Uh, another big issue that came up was uh, smoke detector certification. Yep. The fire department stopped doing those. And so um, most people don't realize, but in order to close a real estate purchase, uh, the attorneys um, are required to have a smoke detector certification. And so we had to kind of scramble internally, figure out what we were gonna do. Um, the state, there was some emergency legislation passed through the state, which allowed uh, purchase closings to happen without a smoke detector certification, provided that the buyer assumes liability for getting that, you know, that, that the smoke detectors are operational uh, in the property. And so there's some verbiage going into those. So there's a lot of um, uh, moving that parts that's been, been going on as of late. And 
you know, I'm proud to be part of this industry in the sense that we have been able to kind of come together and, uh, and make things happen in order to help our clients. That's, you know, the, the realtors on your end, the, the lending folks on my end, as well as the attorneys. Uh, one, of the, one of the things I've observed, Brad, is that it doesn't matter what company you're in. There's a community of people that do real estate that's come together. And, you know, it, it, real estate agents, we're all competitors, right? And there's a number of calls and forums that I'm on where it's, how do we keep doing this? How do we keep moving the ball forward? Um, David Jaime Lieberman Law is doing some excellent updates yep. for, for folks to know, okay, here's how we're getting around this. Here's how we're dealing with that. Uh, and I think that that's, that's encouraging. I, I think when this is all said and done, uh, some inefficiencies may be taken out of the system as a result of this. We may end up at a better spot. I'm, I'm really stretching here, Brad, to come up with a silver lining in all this, but we may have some good things come out of this. Well, I, 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 I think you're right. I mean, I, I, again, you know, uh, uh, when life deals you lemons, you, you try to make the best out of it and see what kind of lemonade you can get. And this has definitely been challenging and, and frightening in many ways. But I think you're right. Um, you know, technology has allowed us that and um, the creative thinking of a lot of folks and the fast actions of a lot of folks, uh, including the State House, to get these things done um, has enabled things to, to move forward. I think the other silver lining is, is the, the coming together uh, of, of, of people um, and how quickly that's happened. I, I've been very impressed. You know, I mentioned earlier on the company's switching over to uh, to ventilators. Um, I just read today that you know Elon Musk um, of Tesla was successful in delivering a thousand ventilators. I think he threw the switch on it last week, and that, and was that, able to that's amazing to me. I used to live next door to uh, I used to live in Milford in a condo, and I lived next door to a guy that worked for um, the General Motors plant in Framingham, and right. every summer like clockwork, he had off as they retooled the plant. It was like two or three months that he was, he was not working. Uh, for them to, um, I'm going to say turn on a dime. I think, you know, going from making cars to making ventilators in, in a week um, is, is phenomenal. And I know that GM and Trump, there's a whole discussion going on right now. And, and I don't want to go down that path, but the point is, the industries are coming together and seeing what can be done to try to help move the ball forward. And that to me is phenomenal. I couldn't agree more. And, and, and people giving of themselves to, to help, you know, protect the front line. I, I read someone local right here in Westboro um, uh, made some masks because she happened to go into the grocery store and noticed that the people on the front line there, and again, those people are on the front line, the folks stocking the shelves, the folks ringing the cash registers, all of that. Those people weren't protected, so she made some masks and dropped those off. Um, there's a dressmaker in New Bedford, a wedding dressmaker, who took his material that he had, stopped making wedding dresses, and for the last couple of weeks has been making uh, masks. Um, and, and you know, when you just see, I'm just, I'm, I'm amazed at the human spirit. I'm amazed at the coming together um, and how how people have rallied and. It's very, um, it's very uplifting because, you know, prior to this, you, a lot of industries, there's a, a lot of internal combativeness, there's a lot of political juxt for position, and, um, and a lot of self-interest um, things going on. This is all about taking care of, of, of the people that are on the front line. This is all about coming together as a, as a, as a, as a people, as a species, and caring for you know fellow humans, and I'm I'm just it's great to see. It's very uplifting. So that's the silver lining that I don't think other than something like this that we would have seen. The other thing I want to point out is that nature is continuing. The as I look out my window, I don't know if anyone's noticed that you're sitting in Westboro and I'm sitting high atop French Hill in Marlboro, Massachusetts. Uh, as I look out my window, the trees are budding. Daffodils are starting to poke their way up. Uh, spring is coming, and I always enjoy spring as a time of freshness and renewal, etc. cetera. Um, don't know how long a slog we're in for now, and, and you know, is it gonna be 
in the um, early part of April, Easter, May, not sure when we're going to start to go back to normal or uh, if it's going to be far longer than that. But my point is uh, going for a walk outside, practicing distances and all that. It's just really, it's a great thing to do this time of year anyway, and especially now because it, it gets you from being inside, locked up, cooped up, to being out and not so dreary. The, I agree with you. I, I think it's, it's, it's so important as your daily practice. I can't, you know, I, I've been telling everybody the same, my children, my, my, my family, my friends, you, you got to have a few ingredients. One is, you know, get outside every day. Even if it's raining a little bit, grab an umbrella, go for a walk, just get some, get out of the house a little bit and get some exercise. It's important to get some exercise to stretch those legs, to stretch those muscles. And, um, and also, keep, you know, keep a positive mental attitude. Try to limit yourself to maybe, you know, more than an hour of news a day because otherwise, you know, it really starts to work on your psyche. And there's not a lot that you can do about, about changing um, what's coming out of the news right now. Um, so limit that to that. And then, you know, I've been saying, you know, eat right. Make some good food choices uh, at least during the day. And then at night, you know, you can, you can maybe have a little something, reward yourself with either a little sweet or maybe a glass of wine, whatever it is, to just kind of, you know, relax a little bit. Try to give yourself some structure. And, and most of all, you know, keep a positive mental attitude. We, um, we are going to get through this. This is, this is, you know, it's not like something we've confronted before, but we have confronted other types of viruses. We've confronted other types of things, and we will get through this, um, you know, as long as we keep taking care of, you know, people. One of the other things you were talking about, silver linings and going for walks, getting out, you know, it's been funny. So Cindy and I uh, walk every day for, for about an hour, and even though when we cross the other side of the street, if someone's on our side of the street, we cross the other side of the street, we'll make a point to smile and say hello and talk. And so neighbors are talking and um, that's, you know, you're, you're hearing about, you know, people singing, uh, I think in Boston, they were singing Sweet Caroline. Right. And, uh, and I think it's, it's, it's great that people are reaching out to neighbors too and checking on them and, and talking to them and that level of communication. I, there's, there's definitely a silver lining there too. Well, Brad, I'm happy that we were able to connect this afternoon, give a few thoughts to uh, folks on what we're seeing from a real estate perspective. Uh, we, we aren't sitting in a radio studio. I'm at home. You're mm -hmm. at home. And we're practicing safe series production. How's that? <laughs> I like it. I like it, Gary. That's good. That's good. All right, Brad. Well, thank you. And, and before we go, Gary, listen, if folks, if you've got any concerns, uh, questions about real estate, even if this has nothing to do with Gary or I, you don't need to get a, you know, a, a deal out of it. If you have mortgage questions, feel free to contact me. If you've got real estate questions, contact Gary. We're here to help. We're, we're anything. If there's anything we can help you, if you need a connection to an electrician or plumber, if you've got something going on that you think that you don't know where to turn to, feel free to reach out to us. If we can help you. You know, anybody, Brad, along, along those lines, Brad, uh, Normally, we take our videos and we send them somewhere in nice captions and graphics and so forth come flipping in. Um, those, are, those are produced by someone who uh, works at Harvard, and I don't think that he's working right now. Right. So um, how would someone reach you if they needed to? So the best way to reach me would be their either email at B Avergon. So that's B-A-V-E-R-G-O-N at Envision, E-N-V-I-S-I-O-N, bank, B-A-N-K, dot com. So be Avergon at EnvisionBank.com or by cell phone, which is 978-375-5531. And Gary, what's the best way to reach you? I'm uh, Gary, G-A-R-Y, at movewithgary.com and also 508-733-6005. Thank you, Brad. Have a great day. Be safe. Be well. You know, Stay sanitized. Bye-bye. <laughs>